Okay, right, good. Um, so uh, we'll begin with prayer as always. Uh, how about uh, Jeffina? Jeffina, would you be able to lead us in prayer today? Okay, not sure about the connectivity. Uh, okay, let me see. Okay, Brother Abdesh, can you lead us? Ma'am, I'm riding bike. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, fine, fine, fine. No problem. Okay, I'll just leave it open. I think when I pick names, it's not working somehow. So I'll leave it open to anyone. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this time. We humble ourselves before your presence once again. We pray even as we continue to learn from your word. Lord, help us to focus, help us to listen, help us to understand, and help us to apply this in our life, O oh God. We pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that we would be able to see the mysteries of your will, God. Help us, Nancy, to deliver your word. And help us to follow it, Lord Jesus, throughout. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Thank you for um, praying. Uh, so, so far we have touched on uh, praying for our family. Uh, and we also saw there can be some special situations where we are persevering. It could be a matter of sickness or it could be a matter of someone going away from God. And uh, in those instances, you know, we provide that uh, or, or we endure. Right? We endure and we wait on the Lord. So today we will learn about how to pray for other believers. And this is something we see in scripture. So we can use that as a pattern and a model uh, in our prayer times. So uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 and 19, you know, we are told that we must pray all kinds of prayers. Shall we read that passage, uh, class? I think today we will probably read more scriptures. So I want you all to be ready to you know, turn to the passages and read it out aloud uh, because it's good to look at those passages and understand it. So Ephesians 6, verses 18 and 19, one person can please read that. And then after that, Luke 22, verses 31 and 32. So first, Ephesians 6, verses 18 and 19. Could someone read that, please? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 to 19. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Divya. So, you know, we see so clearly we see there that we are told to pray for all the saints. So all kinds of prayers are to be made, also intercession to be made for the people of God. Uh, but the important part here is that we must pray for other believers. Prayers are not just for us and our family alone, but we must pray for other believers. And also, you know, Paul is asking the believers to pray for him because he's also uh, you know, in the kingdom of God, but at the same time, he's a minister of the gospel. So intercessory, intercessory prayer, okay, that is a, um, it is an opportunity which we have. It's a privilege which we have. And uh, as we pray for people, you know, we see God's protection on their lives. We see God working in their lives. We see the works of Satan cancelled uh, in the lives of the people. If you recall yesterday, I talked about um, Acts chapter 12, where Peter, he was imprisoned. And yet, you know, God 
had a way of bringing him out when the believers gathered together and prayed for him so it's it's a weapon you now we engage in prayer and god is able to destroy the plans of satan against other believers so in all these ways we can actually minister to them so intercession is very very important and key and we must never forget to pray for others who are in the body of christ and you know we do understand you know, pray, uh, that uh, um, others who are in the kingdom of god here in this passage it says pray always for all saints so who are the saints the saints are uh, those who have been sanctified and justified by god for every child of god who is born again and in christ jesus they do our position as saints so we are called to pray for them how often it says always so um uh, we must make it a point to pray for other believers and we will also touch on praying for ministers of god towards the end of today's session but we do include ministers of god as well so let's quickly look at luke 22 verses 31 and 32 please so someone else uh, if you can read luke 22 verses 31 and 32 that will be good simon simon the whole satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and you when once you have turned the game strengthen your brother brothers yes thank you john so here we see again going back to the example of jesus jesus himself is praying for the disciples so he is praying for those who believe in him okay so he's praying for the believers and you know when he himself is giving us this pattern we also ought to pray for others and we have already seen from the previous passage here that we must pray we must intercede for other believers and that we must pray always for other believers and one of the reasons and in this case you know jesus when he prays for peter it's a prayer for protection it's a prayer for realigning peter and uh, jesus knew that you know peter is going to go through an adverse uh, situation in his life you now obviously when uh, uh, peter along with the other disciples they saw that jesus who had promised to you know they they probably try, even though jesus told them many times that he is going to die he is going to face um, a very difficult death i don't know how how much of that they uh, understood because they probably thought that here is the king of the jews you know very soon we will uh, we will probably have a government established by jesus but when things started to move in the direction of jesus going to the cross they were disappointed okay they were so disappointed and confused to the fact that uh, you know jesus was uh, sorry the disciples uh, and particularly peter right particularly peter uh, he denies jesus and jesus knows about this so when jesus knows about an adverse situation that peter is going to go through what does jesus do for him pray okay now we can look at other believers in our lives and maybe right now they are going through uh, something challenging that is shaking their faith or we know that okay as they go through the journey there is going to be something coming up where they will face difficulties and that can rock their boat we like jesus we can cover them in prayer and here jesus says okay i'm praying for you peter because you know so that your faith will not fail meaning i want you to stay on the track till the end i want you to finish the race and that is the reason jesus is praying so what does jesus really uh, use in a sense to help peter stay on track prayers and today as we pray right we pray for other believers even if they are going through a challenging situation our prayers will help them so uh, pray for the saints pray always pray especially when they are going through a tough situation let's continue to look at 
uh, you know, praying for other believers. So what are all the aspects which we can cover when we pray for other believers? There are certain things that we can touch upon. So 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 7. Again, I would like somebody to read that. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 7. Someone else, please. We'll have to be a little fast, otherwise, uh, yeah. Yes. Bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Second, First uh, Corinthians thirteen seven. Uh, is there only Second Corinthians? You would need to read Second Corinthians, is there it only? Okay, uh, you're oh. still on. Yeah. yeah. Now I pray that God, that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, uh, basically, what Paul is uh, saying is that you know he is he's saying that the believers that they should not do evil, that they should continue to stand, okay, in the midst of, um, uh, and we know at the time there was deception, there was, you know, um, wrong, wrong teachings that could draw people into, draw people away from God. So he wanted them to continue in the faith, okay, and just the way Jesus prayed for Peter and said, I want you to continue in the faith, Paul is also encouraging the believers that they must continue in the faith. So what is one requirement on the part of the believers to continue in the faith? For them to not give up, right? For them to finish the race, the way Paul said, you know, I, I have fought a good fight, I finished the race. So when we pray for our brothers and sisters, when we pray for those who are in Christ, you know, we can pray and say, Lord, you know, we pray that their faith will stand. We pray that they will not, um, you know, be uh, moved by, by any anything that can deceive them, that Lord, their faith will be firm, okay, uh, that uh, things like that. So basically that they remain on track. And that is one of the prayer requests which we can have for the believers. You know, whenever we see them, and they're serving God so beautifully, so well. We are encouraged by that. But when we pray for them, <laughs> excuse me, we can pray that God will keep them, you know, fervent. God will keep them passionate always and that they will never move from that. So pray that they will not fall. Pray that they will never give in to evil or deception. So that is one prayer request which we can pray for them. Now, we can also pray for them um, that Christ be formed in them. And we've already looked at this scripture earlier, Galatians 4, 19, where Paul says, you know, uh, I uh, I labor in the in the birth pangs, right? We, when we talked about travailing, we said that, that Christ be formed in you. So another prayer point which we can pray is that God let the believer become more and more like Jesus or let Christ's likeness come through in the life of the believer. So that is another prayer which we can pray for the believers, the nature of Christ to be revealed through them. The third one which we will pray is uh, the way Paul prayed for the Ephesian church. You know, in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, he says, Ephesians 1 verses 16 through 19, he says that, you know, may the Lord give you that revelation, let him give you a revelation knowledge uh, to know more about God and to know the riches that God has already given to us. So we can pray the same thing for our believers that God, you give everyone, Lord, this understanding of who you are. What is the love that you have for us? What are the blessings that this love has given us? I think it's a good passage for us to read 
So Ephesians 1 verses 16 through 19. Another person, if you can please turn to it and read that passage, it will be helpful. Ephesians 1, 16 through 19. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what mm -hmm. is the hope of his calling. What are the riches mm -hmm. of the glory mm -hmm. of his yeah. inheritance in the saints? Yeah. And sure, what is the... Sure. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Mm, yeah, thank you, Zinitoni. So you see that uh, the prayer which Paul has is that the believer will have the knowledge, right? Uh, that this is who God is. This is how God loves. And this is what God has done. And this is the kind of overcoming life that I can have. Right? And I can exercise the authority and the dominion that God has given me. So we must pray that God, you give this revelation to us and every believer. Even when we prayed for the family, we said that, you know, we, we will pray that our family members will understand who they are and that they will grow spiritually uh, in um, what God has called them to do. And in the same way, we are praying for other believers. Okay? We can also pray that uh, the believer will um, be fruitful and will develop in spiritual strength. There are a couple of passages that we can touch on, but let us look at Colossians 1 verses 3. Can somebody turn to Colossians 1? Three, yeah, um, actually, it's kind of long, but you just read till verse 8. I think it's sufficient. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, Pastor. Colossians chapter 1, verse 3 yeah. onwards. Uh, once again, once again, John. Yeah. Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. All right. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all saints, because of the hope laid, upon, laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel which has come to you. Just as in all the world also, it is constantly bearing fruit and increasing, even as it has been doing in for you, uh, since also the day you heard of it and understood the grace of God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow born servant, who is a faithful servant of Christ on our behalf, and he also informed us of your love in the spirit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you for that. So basically, he's exhorting the Colossians, uh, Paul, when he writes, and I told you earlier that Epaphras was his contact. Okay. So uh, he had never actually gone to Colosse to meet the believers, but he's saying that, you know, you're all doing well and you're being fruitful um, and you know the example of our brother Epaphras. And then, you know, he continues to uh, speak to them the same way he told Ephesians that, you know, you would grow in your knowledge, you would grow uh, in your understanding of who God is. But I'll quickly read verse 10 over there. Uh, and he says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay, So he wants the Colossian church to continually be knowing God and living a life which is pleasing to God, living a life which is fruitful to God. And then, you know, he, he continues to say that they may be strengthened and all of that. So uh, that's the kind of prayer which Paul has for the Colossians. So he said 
uh, increase in the knowledge of god have a revelation of you know who god is who we are uh, and you know our overcoming life and also we can add to that and say that the believer be fruitful the believer have a life which is pleasing to god right uh, the believer be strengthened spiritually these are additional points that we can continue to pray for the believer so overall what have we looked at till now so we are saying we must pray for the believers um, at all times and especially for protection over the believers in their adverse situations and here are uh, the things we will touch on that they should continue in the journey they should not be deceived they, that christ likeness be seen in them that they will have the knowledge the revelation who god is who they are and also that they be strengthened that they they be fruitful in the work which god has called them to do okay now let's continue a few more few more uh, passages in the bible which help us to pray for other believers colossians 4:12 colossians 4:12 so yeah uh, okay anybody can read it even if it's a repetition if you've read once it's okay you can read again Colossians 4:12 Colossians 4:12 Epaphras yeah. who is one of your member born slave of Jesus Christ sends mm. you his greetings always laboring earnestly for you in his prayers that you may stand perfect and truly assured in all the will of God Yes thank you thank you John So you see that what is another point to touch on that the believer may be complete in all the will of God So whatever god has called us to do our purpose basically it means our purpose that we will fulfill god's purpose for our lives okay that's a prayer which we can pray for our brothers and sisters and then you know the last point which we can touch upon is as paul prays for uh, uh, the thessalonians he says that whatever is lacking in your faith that that will be made perfected okay so these are all things that we could take in general and pray for any believer now suppose you know <clears throat> god is reminding you of a certain brother in church or a certain sister in church and you're wondering hey i don't even know this person but what do i pray for them you can actually pray for all these matters that they fulfill god's purpose now you know that they will be strong in the faith that they will be fruitful right uh, and uh, all of that you can just pray in general over them so these are good prayers and these are also prayers which you can kind of uh, i know of people who pull out these passages you know especially uh, the passage here on ephesians 1 verses 16 through 19 uh, i think they pray it very regularly you can even just read through you can read through that as you pray for people or yeah, another passage is um, uh another verse is colossians 110 you can pick that verse up you can read it and even as you read it as it says okay that that uh, you be fruitful in every good work lord we pray that our brothers and sisters or every believer in our church they will be fruitful in every good work that they be pleasing unto the lord lord we pray that they be pleasing unto you okay so if we can just pull out even the the like word by word in these passages the beautiful prayers these are all wonderful prayers just pull it out spend time declare it uh, over your church family and you can pray okay so some general things to cover now god may very specifically show certain individuals to us uh, and so you know we can pray for them now even when paul ministered um, uh, we we find that he he kind of uh, focuses his prayers on some of his co-workers he prays for timothy uh, at one point you know i pray for you timothy and he prays for philemon so specific individuals we can pray for the church at large these common points now specifically for certain individuals god might put a couple of things on our hearts and say okay this brother why don't you pray for his ministry okay why don't you pray that uh, you know yeah, uh, he will be he will uh, he will have more of god's grace in his ministry then you go ahead and pray more specifically specifically for that particular need now there are a lot of people that we know personally 
in the church right and we also know their needs so we can focus in on those needs as well maybe there are um, young people that we are working with they still don't know what is god's plan for their lives so we can pray and say god we ask that you would reveal to them you know which uh, which is the area that they must invest in that you will open the doors for them to move in that direction we pray for your favor we pray for um, you know the right people to to come in contact with them so on and so forth basically guiding them into the purposes of god for their lives so depending on you know the specific needs of the people we can pray so we have the general prayer and then we have the specific prayers which we will cover and uh, uphold believers now we can also consider some of the needs that the believers may have one is healing and uh, we are encouraged in god's word Uh, in james again james chapter 5 we have seen it so often verses 13 through 16 where we are told that the prayer of faith okay so we pray the prayer of faith over the sick person and that heals that individual so we can pray for healing uh, when they are in need of healing 1 john chapter 5 verses 14 through 16 that talks about uh, a person who is in sin they've gone astray so we can pray for such an individual to repent and to come back to god so when we know of such believers around us it is our responsibility to pray for them so we pray repentance over them we pray that say god turn them back bring them back to yourself so this is an area of need when uh, believers have wandered away from god we can pray that they repent we can also pray for those who have blessed us materially okay so uh, somebody who has provided for us somebody who has given us in our in our times of need you now we can uh, pray that god will bless them back in return okay so that's also something that we can do we can pray um for not just individuals but also communities of believers to mature in the lord to become complete or uh, they are walking in the purposes of god for their lives so they would do that and uh, that every need of the believers may be met so these are all ways in which we could uh, pray for the believers and when we look at the way paul prayed for the believers the, you know many of these passages are from paul's writings only so uh, these were all his concerns the spiritual maturity of the people the fruitfulness of the people uh, them fulfilling god's purpose for their lives okay uh, and then walking strong with god throughout so he was passionate about all these things in fact his passion was uh, so great and also we must remember that he had an apostolic calling okay so he prayed uh in in a very um i don't know what word to use but a strong way for the churches so in second corinthians chapter 11 verses 28 through 29 uh paul he says besides the other things what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches who is weak and i am not weak who is made to stumble and i do not burn with indignation so for paul as he thought about the believers as he thought about the churches that he had planted no it was not just a matter of you know how we are saying okay let us pray for the family let us pray for the other believers let us pray for the city it's like ticking off a list but it was much more than that for paul he was deeply concerned to the extent where see how he's saying he's saying if somebody is weak am i not weak who is made to stumble and i do not burn with anger or indignation so he say that his concern was such that if anyone was struggling among the believers he felt it deeply as an apostle if anyone sinned he kind of got angry about it that you know how can you go away from the ways of god so the passion 
that Paul carried for the believers is seen in these scriptures. And no wonder we saw how he has written you know, the things that he's praying for the believers. Very passionately, he's praying for you know, various aspects uh, that concern the believers' lives, that concern the believing communities. So what are we saying? We're saying that you know, it must be when we pray for believers, it must be more than, ah, okay, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 and 19, it says, you know, pray for all the saints. That's why I'm praying for the believers. That's all. There's no other reason. But the passion, right, that Paul had, of course, he had an apostolic calling. So he felt deeply in that sense as well. But still, you know, as believers, we too can carry a concern and a, um, uh, you know, if you could say passion to see every believer in the body of Christ established, strong, serving God, being fruitful, um, you know, and thriving uh, in God. So with that kind of an attitude, when we pray, it is a blessing for uh, other believers. Now, we can also pray for ministers of God. In what Divya read in that same passage, uh, we saw how Paul says, pray for me. So is it okay for a, um, uh, a minister of God, any capacity to ask for prayer? What do you think? Shouldn't the ministers pray for the believers? How can the ministers ask for prayer? Okay, Divya says they need prayers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, how about the others? What are your thoughts on that? Pastors, leaders, should we pray for them? I mean, you know, God has called them as pastors. They should be fine. Okay, Nubega, we should all pray for each other. Okay, we should pray for each other. True. True. Praying for leadership. Okay, yes, we must. And we've seen passages earlier, isn't it? Where we've been called to pray for leaders. We must bless our leaders. We must pray for our leaders. So, yes, we are called to do that. And we must, uh, uh, you know, as people of God, um, we, do, we uh, do remember our pastors and leaders. So what are the prayers that Paul is asking the believers? So he's asking them, uh, one is in Ephesians 6, 19, he says, um, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So Paul is asking the believers to pray for boldness, to pray for Clarity, right? Clarity of thought uh, so that when he speaks, the mystery of God's kingdom can be understood by the people. So he's asking for prayer uh, for this particular reason. Then in another place, Romans chapter 15, you know, uh, he pray, he asks the believers to pray for his deliverance. Verse 31, Romans 15, 31, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. So the opposing people that he will escape their hands and that whatever ministry he has to offer, uh, the saints will be happy to receive it or the believers will be happy to receive it. So those are the points that you know you can also pray for uh, pastors and leaders you know, that they will have boldness they will know how to speak uh, to bring understanding that they will be protected from opposers that they will be accepted by god's people wherever god positions them to minister now what else does he ask okay again he asks for deliverance uh, uh, he Okay, this is in the passage, Philippians chapter 1, 
verses 19 through 21. So I will read the entire passage. It says, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay. So uh, uh, when he's writing uh, the book of the Philippians, we know that you know he was imprisoned and uh, he was in a difficult situation. So he is definitely seeking deliverance. But at the same time, you know, whatever be the outcome, he wants God to be magnified, that God will be magnified um, through his body, whether by life or by death, he says. So he's asking the believers to remember him while he's in prison. So in this manner, you would find, you know, Paul uh, requesting different things from various churches. So you have other passages as well that you could look up where Paul is inviting the believers to pray for him. So today, that's what we've looked at. We've looked at the fact that we can pray for believers. We can pray for believing communities as well as for ministers of God. So we've touched on a couple of things here, but you know, I will leave this uh, time open uh, for us to add to it. Now, what else do you think we can pray either for believers or for pastors? Anything else you want to add to this list? Or is it already complete? Praying for those who are falling away. Yeah. Okay. Shadivya. Yeah, I think we briefly touched on that, no? After the general prayers, we said maybe some need healing. Some who have wandered away, they need to repent. So, yeah, 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 we'll focus on them. Yeah. What else do believers need? Just think together with me. Apart from this list. Like the specific needs, right? Like yeah. something that uh, they would be asking for prayer, specifically asking for prayers. Correct. Yeah. They, uh, some... You know, uh, depending on, like when you talk to them, you'll come to know what is that person's particular need and we could pray for that. But uh, like, you know, believers, obviously they need resources. Uh, they might be in need of finances, right? Or help. Uh, it, like we've seen now recently the COVID season so where so many believers, they were... Uh, people lost their jobs, people had uh, somebody sick in their families. So they were in a dire need, financial need. So that is also something we could pray for. We can declare you know, God's provision over the lives of the people. Mm. So uh, in, that, in that manner, I'm asking you, what, am, what else do you see as needs of believers? Okay, so how about we uh, do this exercise? Maybe uh, wherever you are, okay, in your context, in your context, uh, you can 
take some time and think about the believers that you know you are associated with that could be you know the believers in your local church the believers in your local church and some of the churches in your region okay you know them quite well what are their current needs what are their current needs and is it possible to make a prayer list where you write down okay i am praying for point 1 you know for them to increase in the revelation uh, you know the knowledge of god and all that i am praying for them to be uh, complete in all the will of god i am praying for them to be fruitful then who want to more specific ones i am praying for them to be based on the situation of the believers you know is it possible for for you to put down maybe three points three specific points that are relevant to your own context okay is that possible everyone can you list out three points Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Please do. So just write out three things. See, for example, maybe in your given region, you know that a lot of believers are going through persecution. Now that could be something. You know, the way Paul asked prayers for himself and said, "You pray that you know I will be delivered from those who are opposing me." we can pray for the believers for god's protection because there is opposition okay which they are facing in that manner so maybe persecution is something that you are observing in your region or you might be observing on the other hand you might be observing you know apathy or uh, people are very relaxed they are very you know chilled out not passionate for god so you might want to pray and say okay lord we pray that every you will awaken every heart by your spirit right so that could be one of the points in your region you might find people if they are walking passionately uh, you know strongly with god righteously we might say okay lord we pray that they will continue to be strong in you continue to follow you continue to uh, you know live a righteous life but on the other hand if we see that oh a lot of believers around us they are stumbling you know there something seems to be uh, like a common sinful thing that people are getting into we may want to pray against that right so very specific to your own area if you could just write down you know three points for the believers i think that will be very good for us to uh, sort of strengthen the believers with our prayer Okay. yeah so let's do that activity uh, and uh, you could write down and uh, how about uh, you know we share that in class next class i think that will be good not everyone whoever is comfortable a few of you if you can read it out i think that will help uh, even the others understand okay great so uh, yeah so anything with regard to praying for believers any other additional comments or questions that we can look at is this a common practice that you have any any of you you are practicing this already praying for other believers y yeah yeah yes. okay so uh like would you like to share more divya how you do it uh maybe praying for specific needs uh okay. their specific needs whatever they have shared uh, you know their yeah. personal needs for children Uh, yes yeah yeah such things yes mm -hmm. yeah and we do uh, like also sometimes you know there would be a lot of people who 
would have invested in our lives right throughout yeah. college time and so yeah whenever you know god puts that in our hearts yeah we do pray mm. for them for the churches that we are part of the ministries or bible study groups that we are part of yeah yes yeah may not be like spending long times in in the, those prayers but yeah uh, yeah we just pray about those think about and pray about those things mm -hmm. sure sure the yeah yeah thank you for sharing um and uh, as i was sharing with us you know when we studied about uh, scheduled prayers how we allocate time and in that we can use a pattern of prayer where you know we we spend time in uh, adoring god worshiping god then we present our needs to god so i think the lord's pattern or we said acts you know that's another pattern that uh, we can follow or be led by the spirit in our everyday prayer times we can have you know one portion uh, of that time allocated for believers so we can pray the general prayers and as paul prayed he prayed for timothy he prayed for a philemon he prayed for certain people so we can also have names of people that maybe we are working with them in the church right um, we could be mentoring them and we really want to see god uh, strengthen their hearts and their lives so we can take some time to pray for those individuals and then as divya said regularly there are people who have personal needs you know some financial situation marriage situation children uh, in some kind of a, a need or whatever so specific more specific we can do that so every day you know i know this one a particular auntie in my church you know who says okay this is the timing she has a particular timing and uh, she says okay at that time so even whenever like i share something and i say oh, okay i need prayers for this she'll be like okay at this time i'll be praying for you because that is her time to pray for believers and she has a list that she follows and i just wanted to share with us you know there are two prayer groups that i engage in on a weekly basis uh, and on a weekly basis we have a prayer list in that prayer list what we have done is we have written down um, some of these general prayers so as far as i am concerned i think for the last uh, two Year, yeah roughly two years you know these points which we are saying right pray for spiritual maturity pray for spiritual growth regularly we are praying same point we are praying you know now for two years at least i am praying these these points for my local church for the believers that i know god that they must grow in you that they must mature in the things of god you know they must be uh, uh, fully equipped they must be fruitful uh, they must be well pleasing so you know these are things that we are praying uh, and, and it's there in our points so there are the general points and then there are the more specific points where we pray for our church we have written down okay these these things we want to see god move we want to see god uh, you know minister in this way and more specific points in fact that list has become very long because we've broken it down with regard to children okay three four points are there children we pray for them to grow in the lord for them to uh, desire god in the days of their youth uh, for them to uh, you know not go astray and then we have put specifically we have put certain things that you know they should not get addicted to gaming they should not get addicted to this and that they should make the right career choices so we have broken it down then marriage you know we pray for couples we pray for couples who who are uh, seeking god for a child Uh, we pray for couple so it it's all broken down into you know many uh, many such small small things uh, people in financial need so we kind of pray over this list regularly we we, we are praying uh, and also both the groups both the groups that i am a part of we have written it down we have written it down and then we have broken down the points and every uh, in fact today friday so we have a prayer chain uh, one prayer chain happens through the night the other prayer chain is just in the evening time you know we take slots so something like okay um 8 o'clock to 8:30 and it's on whatsapp because we can't meet in church right because of covid so it's on a whatsapp group so we kind of post there and we say uh, okay take up whoever can sign up for each slot let us know so then people sign up something like 8 to 8:30 divya 8:30 to 9 john uh, 9 to 9:30 nancy you know uh um 9:30 to 10 isaac so 
people sign up for it okay and we know who's praying for which slot uh, and for how long and the prayer list so one person makes the prayer list and we send it and that prayer list is prayed over you know week after week and this is a corporate prayer i'm giving you example of corporate prayer but we could also uh, have a list like this for our personal prayer and it is really helpful where we are declaring we are praying over other believers we could also be praying over ministers of god so as god puts different ministers we we'll write it down just bless them okay life and death is in the power of our tongues and as believers we can bless so even when you just say lord i bless the believers in my church i bless my pastor i bless what are you doing you're releasing that the spirit and life just releasing god's power over people's lives and uh, uh, as uh, who, who said that somebody said here ah uh, lubega lubega said you know we we should all pray for each other okay god has called us to pray for each other believers pray always for all the saints so remember the saints carry them in your heart and keep blessing them pray for them pray for them as the holy spirit leads you okay isaac says in this time of covid 19 the love of god is growing cold in believers in our church some even stop coming to church they concern the worried about finding money or material needs faith is shaking yeah true uh, isaac yeah challenging times um so one way in which you and i can minister is you pray for them okay we can pray for them that uh, the way jesus prayed right that your faith should not fail uh, and we can strengthen them through our prayers and let's do that so next class let's begin by sharing our points you know which we have written down for our own uh people and then we will continue into the rest of the the class okay all right everyone let's close with this then i uh, just like to request one person to pray brother avdesh can you pray now i thought you have stopped riding your bike yeah yeah i can pray uh okay lord, yeah yeah you pray now lord jesus uh i came to you father uh you are king of king you are lord of lord you are the father and god of abraham isaac and jacob you are with the paul you are with the uh job you are with the uh david and solomon lord lord jesus we are uh, learning about the prayer and intercession lord uh and lord jesus you are uh, uh you teach us how to pray uh to your disciple lord that is why lord uh, we are coming to your father how we uh, pray and uh, uh, what about we can pray lord uh, uh many scripture scripture are there in the uh, bible lord uh, in the john chapter 17 you pray for your uh, yourself and you pray for your disciple and you you pray for all the believers lord uh lord jesus i am praying in this uh, prayer uh, and intercession class lord uh, what we learn lord and what we are going to plan uh, and what uh, what type of prayer we are going to pray lord please uh, bless us and teach us lord and uh, uh, help us to apply this all the uh, lecture and all the teaching we can apply in our life lord thank you for your blessing and uh, uh thank you for your love lord thank you jesus i am praying this pray in jesus name amen 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 thank you thank you brother and thank you everybody and thank you for joining the class today have a blessed weekend we'll meet again next week yeah okay ma'am thank you, you. okay thank you bye